Hi people. I uh, want to talk today about something a little bit different. Um, solo travel and the pros and cons of solo travel as I see it. Now, this is something that's very um, personal insofar as I think it's something that people relate to their personal experiences. You know, it isn't one size fits all. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience and, and just share my thoughts on that. And maybe, uh, you know, feel free to leave in the comments something you've experienced or how you feel about this. What What's your take on the idea of solo travel, traveling alone? Now, I think um, people have different experiences, you know, and some people are just naturally more outgoing than others. If you have a person who has severe anxiety, then simply leaving the house can be an ordeal, right? So I just point that out because there is different levels. So um, it's not one size fits all. But um, what I want to talk about is, is the nature of traveling alone versus traveling in company. Now, I've experienced both. Um, in my 20s, particularly when I was at university around that time in the mid 2000s, I, uh, I did travel abroad a number of times um and for birthday trips you know my parents gave me plane tickets and so on as a birthday present things like that um and i'm very grateful that i done it i'm very pleased that i had that travel experience i think travel is a great thing i think it's an enriching life experience um but you know the the context of the travel can definitely can definitely have an impact i mean if you're if you go somewhere, for example, for a family funeral, you're not going to sightsee. You know, most people wouldn't go for that purpose. So even if it was an interesting place that you hadn't been before, maybe some people would do that as a sort of coping mechanism so that it's not totally pressing. Um, but, you know, most people would say, OK, this is this is for this purpose, for my relative's funeral. Um, it could be for, you know, visiting family, in which case, again, that the sort of touristy side may be less because you're focused on visiting family or something like that. Uh, so I think the context of travel is very important. Um, and of course, business. Um, I've always done freelance work, so I haven't had so much that experience of, you know, having to travel on business. Um, but people may find that, you know, their the company pays for their plane ticket and then they go, they check into the hotel and it's all meeting, 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 and they don't really have much time see or another example might be an Olympian or another athlete or sports person who might travel quite extensively but again they're going for um, the race or the fights or the swimming competition or whatever it is um, and again there's limited time to relax it may be that they have a few days afterwards speaking for myself I would insist on it in a contract I would say Okay, I'm doing this competition. That's what I'm going for. But I insist on having a few days afterwards to see the sites, to see this place I've never been to before. There may not be another chance. Um, especially when you have an Olympic Games, it's a long way from the athlete's home country. I mean, take Tokyo, uh, twenty twenty one, for example. Now, in that case, there were COVID rules, but I'm just using it as an example. Um, but. I did travel alone a lot when I was at university. I went to cities like Paris, Rome, and, you know, some great European cities, Vienna, Prague. In the case of Prague, I was meeting friends, so it wasn't such a challenge. But in other cases, I mean, Rome, for example, it was, uh, it was a birthday present, which my parents kindly considered because they know I like history and they know I like travel. And it is a fascinating city. It's one of the world's great cities. But honestly, the trip was overshadowed by a feeling of loneliness, just gnawing feeling of I need company for this. And I'm not necessarily talking romantic company, you know, a group of friends would have been good. Or um, I've traveled with my father before, but he was, uh, I think he was engaged at that time. But, you know, having a, of a girlfriend, you know, next to me at that time. So. I've had that experience where travel can be genuinely lonely, especially if it's in a romantic part of the world. Um, you know, where you see couples around, where you see groups of friends, it can it can be very depressing. I've experienced that even in Britain, in London, a few times I've experienced that, where you to go down to the capital, 
and I studied in the West Midlands just for a little trip to myself. Um, I'm not saying it was like a constant feeling of uh, loneliness, but I knew that would inevitably kick in. Strange thing is, when I was in China and travelled alone, sometimes very big distances, it was never quite as bad, and I'm not, I don't know why that is. It may be because I knew that I was going to meet up with a friend in the city that I was going to. It may be that I knew people across the country. I don't know why. But you would think that feeling would be even more intense on the other side of the world. It actually wasn't. Strange. But, you know, something like loneliness is not something that you could just wave a magic wand or click and say, oh, just don't feel that way. It doesn't work like that. But, you know, there is obviously a positive side to traveling alone, and a lot of people value it because of the independence it gives. I think people who have been in a difficult relationship where it was so tumultuous, they were always arguing with their partner, and it's kind of like they finally have freedom, then it could be probably a very liberating thing to travel alone. Um, and, you know, the obvious thing is you have the flexibility to do what you want. You're not thinking of someone else's time frame. You're not thinking, oh, will they be bored with this activity? Uh, how will we balance it out? So some of it's my interest, some of it's their interests, you know. So solo travel can be advantageous in that sense, where you've no commitments to the other person and you can just do your own thing. You can explore at your own pace, you know, something that you find interesting, maybe others don't. There's no pressure. You just do it. So that could definitely be an advantage. But in my experience, solo travel is fine. It's a good thing. And I think it can be enriching to life. But you need to do it at a time when you are comfortable with solitude. You know, I think for someone who's lonely, who really wants a partner, they're, you know, they're at a point in their life where they're looking for a partner. I think solo travel can be trying. Now, by the way, I don't think there's any stigma with that. Um, people might say, Nathan, oh, why, why do you talk about this? Honestly, I don't care, and I don't think there's a stigma, or rather, I don't think there should be. But why is it a stigma to say, I feel lonely? Why? It's People shouldn't treat it like it's some sort of illness, or, you know, there's something wrong with someone. It's a very, very human emotion. Human beings are naturally social creatures, at least most of us are. So I don't see why there should be a stigma around loneliness. I think that's ridiculous. Um, but that's honestly my, my feelings on it. Now, I haven't travelled outside the UK in four years, and I'm a little bit agitated about it. I feel like now is the time. Covid's over, you know, most of the restrictions are gone. Now is the time to travel again. But it's financial, you know, I need to save money for plane tickets and so on. Even if it was just a trip to continental Europe, you know, um, that would be something. Hell, even a trip to somewhere in the UK I haven't been to before. But I'd like to get out of the country. I, I, I like travelling by plane, actually. Not everyone does. I've always been okay with plane travel. I feel safe and I, I like it. I, I like the feeling of it. I think it's pretty cool, actually. Um, so, yeah, let me know your thoughts on solo travel. Uh, it's a gender thing in this, you know. Um, some people would say it's unsafe for women to travel alone. Well... I guess it depends on the location and it depends on the experience she has as an individual. And some women are very assertive and able to look after themselves. But uh, I would say common sense would suggest, you know, for anyone actually, not just women, but for anyone, it wouldn't be a good idea to go out in any urban centre late at night, um, especially a city that is known for high crime rates. Not just women, actually men as well. Um, but I don't think it's sexist for women to be a little bit more assertive for obvious reasons. I don't think that's a sexist conclusion. I think it's just common sense. So naturally, a lot of women, it, it's not like they need a man to protect them, but even being with friends or something, I don't think it's a case of, I mean, it shouldn't be that way. People should be free to do what they want. But I also think when it comes to crime, you know, don't don't make it easier for the criminals by by, you know, giving opportunities to them. And a young woman on her own, unfortunately, is vulnerable, potentially. So that, I don't think that's sexist. I think that's just, unfortunately, a reality. Um, but uh, let me know your thoughts on the ideal solo travel. Thanks for watching.